Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. Welcome to the Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Today, our guest is Tahir. Tahir, how are you today? Amazing. Thank you, Kasim. Glad to be here. Thank you. So, uh, Tahir, let us know where you live and what you do. Yeah, so I'm based in Calgary, Alberta, and I'm the founder of Taza Snacks, a South Asian East African snack brand. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, can you guide us? What are your roles in your company? What are you handling uh, by yourself? Yeah. So I'm a solo entrepreneur, which means that everything and anything falls on me. And I've had to learn to be the CMO, the CFO, the CEO, the COO. Um, and we're constantly having, well, I say we, but again, it's me, uh, constantly having to, to adapt and learn to, to all aspects of the business. So that, that's kind of, yeah, it, it's, it's an all around, uh, all around type of deal. Awesome. Awesome. So let us know from where you got this idea and what was the inspiration behind it? Yeah. So I have always kind of had this entrepreneurial spirit uh, since, since I was 12. You know, back in grade one, I used to sell these paintings to kids, these scribbles that I would do and I'd sell them for a dollar to my class. And so this entrepreneurial spirit has always been there. Growing up, I lived in an ethnic household. And what that really meant was that food was a big part of our lives. Food was a big part of how we grew up. My grandma was one of the best cooks that I've I've ever known. Um, and whenever she'd make anything for the house, if there's a plate for me, there's always a plate for the community as well. It was always, you know, you're not just cooking for the people in our house. And so she's always had this idea of how can I, you know, bring my my cooking to the broader demographic, the broader audience. It's always been a wish of hers and something she never got to to be able to do in her lifetime and so i thought there's potential here this is something that's different than what's on the market there's an appetite right now for for ethnic snacks and for diversity you know you see the chips aisle and you go there it's the same thing you see the doritos and the lays there's not a lot of innovation in the snack space and so we thought there might be an opportunity here to introduce all those flavors we grew up on that not a lot of people know but people should know about um, and so that's where Taza really originated from. Awesome. So uh, what is the main ingredient or what is the main product uh, mm -hmm. that is like you can say like this is the best product and this sets yeah. me apart from the market? Yeah. So our flagship product right now is something called Chevro. And what that is, it's a South Asian trail mix is how I like to look at it. It's an Indian style trail mix. Um, so take your traditional trail mix, you have the nuts, you have the raisins, but now add a little bit of spice to it. Right. It's not and it's not meant to be spicy. You know, people think automatically uh, there's like a reddish hue to it. It's going to be super spicy. But actually, it's, it's spicy. It's sweet. It's savory. It's acidic. It's kind of all these different flavors that a lot of people aren't used to. Um, and so that's really what our flagship product is. And we've kind of what our unique selling point is really our spice mix. Right. It's not just going to be this dry trail mix either. Um, it has a little bit of like this, like wetness to it. So it's super tangy as you're eating it as well. This is mouth watering. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm glad to. We're going to have to get you to try it as well. Awesome. Awesome. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, your business is more towards the e commerce side, or you are selling on retail, retail stores as well? So, right now, predominantly our sales are through e commerce. We are working to optimize our e commerce channels. In Canada, you learn that working in the CPG space and getting into the big retailers is a difficult task. And so, our goal really right now is to broaden our e-commerce space. We are in about 35 stores across Alberta, small to medium-sized retailers, grocery stores, family-owned uh, chains. But our predominant business right now does operate through e-commerce, and we're slowly growing our, our retail presence as we kind of grow our customer base, and I like to call it like our cult following around our product. Awesome. So uh, you are obviously, you are selling online, so you mm -hmm. must be doing marketing via social mm -hmm. media and uh, by other means as well, like online. Uh, marketing. So what is your strategy, how you are accomplishing it, and what is the process of acquiring a new customer? Yeah, so a lot of what we've been doing right now is we're still mastering kind of the social media route. It's 
a challenge to to figure out where that balance is on social media. So we're really trying to level into the storytelling on socials, and we're 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 slowly working on building out our content funnels on social media. That's been a nice asset, but at the same time, organic growth is is a great strategy, but it's a slower strategy. It takes a little bit of time to to grow organically on socials, and so we've kind of been leveraging a lot of different mediums. So you know, paid advertisement, obviously through Meta, Google AdWords, um, has been super pivotal. We started doing it on our own and it yielded some results, but then we started looking at, you know, are we the best experts in this space? And I think we, we realized is we've worked with a couple agencies as well who have kind of supported our efforts. A big lesson in marketing is, you know, you can't do it all and it's always adapting. And so find the right people for it. We're looking at implementing a lot of other creative strategies kind of going into the summer months now. And that includes like participating in all these summer markets locally across Canada. We've built and we're building um, almost like a like a bar cart that's portable and it has our logo all over it. Um, and we kind of want to travel across the country with this. And so, you know, I learned that in the CPG space, there's so many brands out there. You really just have to do creative things beyond the traditional to set yourself apart, right? At the end of the day, people enjoy hearing a story and people love to relate to something that's different, that's new, that's exciting, that they can kind of feel something that relates to them internally. And so that's kind of what we're trying to emulate beyond just like the traditional take a video and post it, right? Like how can we get in front of our audience and how can we engage our audience really at the grassroots? Awesome. So what are your growth plans in terms of your short-term goals? Like what are you going to do within three to mm-hmm. six months? Yeah, it's funny. It's We just ran this exercise as well, kind of like what are, what is our three, six, one, five, and 10-year goals? Um, and, you know, what the next three to six months really look like for us is one, we've been around for maybe a month and a half officially. Like we launched officially about a month and a half. Um, we piloted our product for about a year and we're still trying to fully adapt our product. We're always trying to innovate on our product. And right now it's really, how can we master our product? In terms of the retail side of things, we're really trying to expand our retail presence. You know, we're noticing a slow, steady growth on the e-commerce side. Um, but now we're like thinking, you know, we need to kind of get into the retail space. Uh, e-commerce is, is tough. It, it's expensive to ship product, especially when the basket size is so small. Um, and so we're really leveraging into the sales side of things right now. And, and that's really what our priority is. Um, yeah, product development and, and expanding our, our sales capabilities. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, in terms of, again, uh, uh, let's talk about, um, about the online marketing. In terms mm. of marketing, uh, do you think we should spend money on ads or, or not? You know, I think for it's a tough thing because mm. we all, and any startup, it's you're operating so lean at the beginning. And I think social media has made it so easy to go viral, right? But at the same time, it's not as easy as we all think it is. And I think a large aspect of it is if you really want to get into um, into the, your target audiences, you're here, you got to pay to play, right? And a lot of these social media platforms have really evolved in that sense of if you're not paying to play, you're not getting in front of the right audiences. And I think you learn as you go. And I think as you grow your ad spend, and I think if you do it correctly, I think your organic content in, in turn also starts growing. And I think you can kind of, achieve this equilibrium where you start to achieve this balance um and i think that's that's where where you know you put your efforts to but i do think it is i do think it is super important that you kind of balance like organic but also the paid side of things so in terms of your marketing budget mm-hmm. how much percentage you are spending on the ads if you are if, if you're doing yeah so initially we started we started with super small budget 500 bucks a month mm-hmm. we leveled that up right at the beginning it's it's really about how can you master your audience, your your targeting? Um, and so experiment with it, right? Is what I really found is start experimenting at the early stages. And we've slowly grown our ad budget. Um, you know, we're looking between the two to three thousand dollars a month, um, and we're seeing a return on that ad spend. Um, and it, it is slowly coming. Um, but at the end of the day, again, it's it's pay to play, right? And you and I get it for most startups, you gotta be super lean at the beginning. And so, you know, where do you put your efforts? And it's it's a tough, it's a tough thing to like say, where are you gonna put that early stage capital? Yeah, awesome. So uh, when do you see do you see that you will be able to create one of your own replacement and you can start focusing on some other things? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a great <laughs> question. And I don't know if we're there, to be fully honest yet. I don't know if we, we've kind of thought that far yet. I think right now the focus has really just been on 
um, growing as quickly as we can myself. Um, mm -hmm. Again, right now, like to be fully transparent as well, we're not necessarily making a profit. We're, we're losing money every month. And, and mm -hmm. I think that's the story of a lot of startups, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. you know, sometimes you're not even thinking about when you're going to replace and, and when you can keep, uh, keep growing the other aspects of your business with others in it. I think it's uh, kind of like a daily thing, right? You go kind of day by day. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's kind of the stage where we're at really right now. Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, because you are uh, wearing different hats at this time, I believe mm -hmm. at least five, six hats you are wearing at this yeah. point. So yeah. uh, I can give you an example of my own business. So I started in, mm -hmm. 2016, in 2016 and uh, uh, I was wearing a lot of hats. I was doing development. I was handling finances. I was handling HR. I was handling business development and many other things were going on. So uh, eventually, eventually, I came to know at there was a point uh, when I came to know, okay, so this is a sure thing for me that I have to delegate my responsibilities. So, you know, what I did is uh, I assigned the responsibility of operations to one of my other director. And eventually uh, we hired HR manager, we hired finance manager. So there was a point <laughs> when I was thinking, probably I don't have anything to do. So this was a time when I started thinking about the business, okay, how I can grow. And uh, that was a turning point for my business. At oh. this point, I stopped development. Uh, in fact, I was doing coding as well, like by myself. I was a CEO. I was a developer as well. I had many other developers in my company, but I was a developer as well. So I stopped it for, uh, at, at a point. And at that time, I realized, okay, now I have penalty of time to think about my business. So that was a good uh, move from my side and I was able to, you know, double my double my revenue. In fact, more than double. So this was something I was thinking about it. But obviously there was a time. I wasn't able to do this in, in initially. I wasn't able to do mm -hmm. this in 2016, in 2017, in 2018. Like I, I, I did this in 2019 at 2020. Yeah. So it took a lot of time. So that's okay. Completely makes sense. So, Okay, in terms of uh, long-term goals, what are you looking for? Not too much uh, long goal, but uh, like what you're thinking for after a year or maybe two. Yeah, after a year or two, and you know, we're really trying to emulate our strategy around some of these CPG brands that have really done well, right? You look at Smart Suites as an example, right? Tara Bosch was a killer, killer entrepreneur. She grew the she grew smart suites in eight years to to then be able to sell it off at such a high valuation, right? And really, what our priorities are: one, we don't want to stray away from our core product offerings. At the end of the day, I think a lot of businesses, you know, get very distracted by the next shiny thing. And I think we really want to say, you know, we understand our product and we understand our target audience now. Um, and we're slowly we're slowly building that that knowledge base a lot more. And we really want to stick to that over the next year um, and really hammer into that. I think we also really want to invest. And like you said, you know, take take some of these hats off of myself um, a little bit, right? Like at some point, you know, we do need to think about how do we bring in the right stakeholders? And I think that's what we're really thinking about as well, right? I think we've learned that. And as an entrepreneur, I think you learn as you go along that you think you're so good at everything and you're really not. Um, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think once I've, I've started to recognize that with myself, I think it's really about who do we start bringing in to help build the business in the direction that we want to take it. And, and the direction is really we want to increase our e-commerce presence and we really want to build a community, right? We don't just want to build a product. We really want to build a community that stands behind the product. At the end of the day, our product is about selling South Asian snacks, right? But it's also about bringing not like recognition to South Asian culture, um, to people of, you know, who, who grew up with ethnic, ethnic foods and maybe, you know, they didn't feel comfortable sharing that with the world, right? So we really want to build a community just beyond the product. All right. So when we are talking about the community, about building a community, mm -hmm. at this point, are you retargeting your customer? Are you aware of your customer base? Like who are your recurring customers? Haven't been, we haven't been doing a good enough job of that recently. And I think we're finally realizing that. And I think we're formulating a strategy around that. I think what we're really trying to do is now go back to our customers. One, do a better job of retargeting. Um, but rather than just retargeting our products at them, we want to engage them within our community, right? Holding community events and bringing them out, building them as stewards of our product. And, you know, instead of going out and looking for people, you know, influencers on social media. How can you build influence 
within a community, right? How can you build influence within your customer base? And that's what it's really been about for us. Of How do we take the people who are already invested in our product, who are invested in our story and who are invested in us, and make them our influencers, right? Because at the end of the day, you could have somebody who has 20,000 followers on Instagram, um, but do they really have influence in your target audience, right? And I think that's what it's really about is how do you find people with with genuine influence um, that can support your growth efforts and that can bring in, you know, the, the target audience that you're really looking for, right? The same people that are um, voicing and, you're, you're, and shouting, shouting your name from the rooftops, right? Yeah, it completely makes sense. So uh, yeah. when you, again, when you are building a community, yeah. Uh, in this at this point, uh, yeah. this, this this is reminding me one of uh, other story where there was a founder who was uh, give who, who just started giveaways uh, oh. randomly uh, about his own product, like like giveaways of his own product, not uh, money, not something else. Oh. He was not giving cars on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, he was giving his own product to the random people on the streets. And he was asking, he was requesting, okay, please try this. Yeah, and I will shoot the video. So they were uh, trying that uh, again. That uh, we, I'm talking about uh, a product that was something like snacks that was related to the berries. Okay, so you can also, uh, I believe, you can also do this. I'm not sure if you have done this in past. Yeah. And if you have done this, I believe you should uh, post it on the on the social media as well because at this point, the authority of community is very strong. I think you have raised a very valid point. Building a community is the next level. I believe this is this is something the next level where you can achieve a lot more things and it will it, mm-hmm. it, it, it must be gradual it must be slow but at the end this will have a, an, a great output i believe so it's funny you say that we actually posted a video just like that yesterday of us interviewing someone <laughs> trying the snack so it, it, it's insanely funny and i do think that it's so important to really showcase you getting in front of your audience. And I look, and I think we look at like the bigger CPG brands that are out there are realizing the same shift of, yeah, we have such a great product that's known, but guess what? People are pivoting their mindsets. People are moving to to support new local businesses, right? And like, how do you really relate to your audience? And I think we're seeing that with all these bigger brands investing in community, investing in, you know, local initiatives and really getting to the grassroots of their audience. Hey y'all, it's Dan Melnick, the CEO of Zing. And I wanted to share a special offer for all of our listeners. Right now, if you need software development services, we'll give you two weeks of a free trial. Do you need to update your website? Do you want to build a mobile app? Do you want to update something that you've been working on for a long time? We've worked in a high-level technology like AI, machine learning, blockchain. So shoot me a text, 817-874-2208. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. So, other than that, uh, Tahir, uh, is there anything, uh, any any problem or challenge that you are facing at yeah. this point, and you are trying to solve it, or maybe you have yeah. faced in, um, at some other point, if you are not yeah. facing at this point? Yeah, I think it's interesting. You know, as an entrepreneur, I've learned you face so many problems in your day to day, and it's and it's crazy. It's crazy to you know conceptualize how many different things um, you're kind of dealing with at once and you don't actually put it into perspective. But, you know, one of the things is being a, being an entrepreneur, being 19 and an entrepreneur right now, the biggest thing you really learn is, you know, as a young entrepreneur, maybe this relates more to, to people who started off super young is, you know, you're always proving yourself a little bit more than the general population, right? You know, pe- people love a story, but, you know, to get in front of the executives at some of these uh, retailers or to be taken through even from a small um, distributor, you know, you have to really put 10 times more of an effort and really showcase who you are, what you're doing and why you're doing it and why you are more trustworthy than someone who's had, you know, 10 years of experience in the industry. So, you know, this is something that we're definitely toying with um, and, and slowly learning how to continuously navigate, but it's an always, it's a constant challenge kind of in the background. I'll say the secondary, the the biggest challenge really we're facing right now is figuring out where to put your best efforts, right? And I think, like I said, when you're you're wearing all the hats, where do you put your time? Um, You got really 12 hours in a day where you're able to really put into it. And even that for some people is already, you know, way too many hours, but in that 12 hours and, you know, when you're, when you're starting up, you're hustling and, but where do you put that 12 hours? Where do you put that? physical capital, that mental capital, your actual capital. Um, so really navigating all these different streams uh, has been a big challenge. But, you know, as you talk to, I think, people who have been in your, you know, been in your place, 
five years ago, even two years ago, you learn that they're able to help navigate you. And that's why I think sharing your struggles and talking through your struggles and not kind of doing it alone. I think a lot of entrepreneurs go at it alone. I think being a solar founder doesn't mean you have to do it all alone. And I think that's been a nice success that I've learned to kind of to complement all of the different challenges. Um, and it kind of supports as you kind of navigate these different challenges. Obviously, true, 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 Tahir. So uh, I really enjoyed this conversation, Tahir. So at the yeah. end, will you please give a biggest piece of advice to our viewers? That's a tough one. You know, I'll say that I live by this statement, and it's from these YouTubers, Yes Theory, if anyone's ever heard of them. Uh, and it's seek discomfort. It's seek discomfort in your life. And I think in everything that you do, I think it's really about challenging yourself and kind of stepping out of your comfort zone. I think, you know, Starting a business is not an easy task. Getting into your business is a whole other thing. And separating yourself from your business to really grow your business, these are all different things. And, and they really take a personality to be able to do it. And it, it's not comfortable and it's not easy. And you're always challenging yourself. And so I think, you know, always push yourself beyond what you believe are your constraints and always push yourself beyond what you know. And I think that in itself, you can be successful in anything you do, whether that's in your job, in your career, in school, in your business, in, in sports, whatever it is, whatever your passions are. I think just continuously build beyond what you know and, and don't, don't stagnate, you know, continue to evolve, continue learning, continue adapting and continue stepping out of your, your comfort zone. Awesome, Tahir. This is one of the most beautiful advices. Uh, I must admire it. So, I Tahir, uh, please let our viewers know how they can reach you. Yeah. You guys can check us out, Taza Snacks at www.tazasnacks.com uh, or at Taza Snacks on social media. But also feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to have a conversation with uh, with founders, young entrepreneurs, young people, anybody. Um, so, yeah, reach out, uh, reach out anytime. Awesome, Tahir. So nice of you for appearing today. It was a really nice conversation and we will stay in touch. See you again. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Kasim. Bye-bye.